the president's entire trip, for starting in Brussels, going all the way to Poland, was billed as an effort to portray a united front in the face of Russian aggression. The president bringing up different world events taking place in Europe to show the battle between democracy and autocracy, highlighting some of the events in Warsaw within itself, the fall of the Berlin Wall, the Soviet era. He invoked the words of Pope John Paul II, be not afraid during this time. But it was the ending remarks to the president's comments about Russian President Vladimir Putin that seemed to be having the lasting impact. Ukraine will never be a victory for Russia, for free people refused to live in a world of hopelessness and darkness. We will have a different future, a brighter future, rooted in democracy and principles, hope and light, of decency and dignity, of freedom and possibilities. For God's sake, this man cannot remain in power. Now, there are concerns that those type of comments could inhibit the potential of a negotiated settlement between Russia and Ukraine. As we know, those peace talks are ongoing to some degree, and it would mark a very stark deviation from current U.S. foreign policy. Up to this point, the White House has not said anything about regime change taking place in Russia or many other dictatorships for that uh, reasoning, whether it be Iran, North Korea. That has not been the official U.S. policy, but President Biden making those words very public yesterday. However, just moments later, the White House was quick to come out and correct the record, telling reporters that the president was emphasizing that Russian President Putin cannot be allowed to exercise power over neighbors in the region and not within Russia in itself. And in fact, this morning, uh, Secretary of State Antony Blinken, traveling in Israel, once again reiterated that the position of the United States is not regime change. But it is worth mentioning that that came less than 24 hours after another alarming gaffe by President Biden in which he told U.S. troops in Ukraine that they would see the resolve of the Ukrainian people when they're there. Now, once again, the White House coming out after that saying there's no plans for the United States or NATO to send troops into Ukraine at this time. But nonetheless, the president's critics are questioning if this is the true intent of the White House right now, or at the very least, questioning the man making these comments at the very moment.